Hello, I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. One of the things I recommend to people when they're first getting into the cloud is to have a look at the DevOps roadmap. The DevOps roadmap basically gives you an overview of all the different tools that you could potentially look into when you're going into the world of cloud. Often when I send this over to people, I'm also saying that this is not a checklist, don't learn everything on this, but no matter what happens, whenever I send this over to someone, they immediately open it and become entirely overwhelmed by the number of different options. And I think this is quite common. So when you're getting into cloud, it's quite easy to get into the habit or the trap of trying to find out which different tool is is the absolute best tool for a specific job. By doing this, you end up spending a lot of time looking into and comparing the different tools. When you don't understand what the tools are even doing, looking into the different comparisons and stuff like that isn't going to make a whole load of sense. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna present to you four different categories of tool that you should focus on. These are the four that I would recommend that you use. You could be going for a software engineering role, you could be going for an operations role, you could be going for a cloud support role, or you could be going for any of these and you don't actually know yet. And that's absolutely fine. And that's why it makes more sense to focus on these sort of foundational aspects of the cloud. Now let's jump straight in and have a look at that first category of tool, which obviously is going to be your cloud provider. I would recommend just picking one and spending quite a bit of time in the first one before moving on to another one. The one cloud provider that I recommend is AWS. The reason I recommend AWS over the others is simply because it has the biggest revenue and market share, and it also has the biggest service offering. Now Azure is definitely the second biggest competitor to AWS at this point in time. So if you have some sort of affinity to Microsoft products, or you find yourself drawn to Microsoft Azure is also a decent second option. Now, second category of tool is infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code allows you to put your configurations for your cloud into repos and source control so that you've got version control, you've got history, you can see what changes you've made, you can roll back to previous changes. So which tool do I recommend for infrastructure as code? I recommend Terraform. The reason that I recommend Terraform is it's an open source provisioning tool. It can be used for third parties as well. So it's not just for provisioning, for instance, AWS resources, it can do Azure as well, or GCP, but also it can be used for other different types of infrastructure that you might not have thought about. For instance, you can even provision your GitHub account through Terraform. You can configure authentication like Auth0. You can configure payment platforms like Stripe. Now, the other options for infrastructure as code are other things like CloudFormation, which is AWS specific, which means that you're kind of tied into that platform and you can't move about. By using Terraform, it means that if you make a decision to go to a different platform, for instance, if you decide uh, later on that you choose AWS first and you go to Azure, by learning Terraform, that's going to work across these different platforms so you won't necessarily need to learn a new tool when you go across and start learning some stuff in Azure. Now the third category of tool I'm going to recommend is not really a tool but it's actually a programming language for all different types of roles even the highest level roles that are barely touching anything programming going to help you if you learn a little bit of programming nonetheless. It's going to allow you to play around with those different services within the cloud provider. It's going to allow you to really get a feel for how that different service works. The language that I recommend you start with is Python. I recommend Python because it's a scripting language which means it's high level. Python comes installed on lots of different Linux distributions and it could well be already installed on your computer which is another added bonus. So it's used very heavily within operations roles. It's used in data, data science and data analytics quite heavily as well and also it's used generally for just software engineering, for writing script. Generally speaking Python is really not a bad language to start with. So the fourth category that I'm going to recommend to you is learning a CI CD tool. Now I'm not a big fan of this term CI CD. I think it can be quite confusing. I think the best way to think about it is just a build or automation tool is just a machine that's going to do things on your behalf, things like testing your code, building your code, and then deploying it. And the fourth tool that I recommend for you is GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions is a CI CD platform uh, that comes within GitHub. It is free. You can use it up to a certain amount. And also you probably already got a GitHub account, so there's no other accounts to set up. The feature set within GitHub Actions is really good and it's growing over time because GitHub is owned by Microsoft and there's lots of investment going into the whole GitHub Actions platforms. Okay, so that was a bit of a whirlwind tour through those four different areas. So that was cloud providers, that was infrastructure as code tools, that was programming, and then that was finally CI CD. Of course, there are many different reasons to choose different tools. And if you go online, you're going to find slightly different opinions from different people. So I hope that helped. Go get hands on and I shall see you soon.